Welcome to Atrium Health and Carolina's Rehabilitation Yoga. Uh, my name is Jackie. I'm a physical therapist with the system and I have a couple of friends joining me today. We have McKenna, Alan, and Jesse. And then with me is Allie, who's going to be just walking around and providing a few little adjustments um, as we go through the class. So we're going to start in a comfortable sitting position. You'll see that we've got folks seated in their chairs and we've got folks seated on the mat. So coming to a position that's comfortable for you and finding a nice stable base of support. So we're sitting in a cross-legged position. If you're seated in your wheelchair, you can have your feet on the floor or on your footrest, but just make sure that they're on something nice and flat and stable. And starting with a little bit of breathing and a little bit of balance, you may choose to challenge yourself and close your eyes. And just notice if that becomes a little bit more challenging to keep your balance. And as you start to transition to your practice, beginning to slow your breathing, beginning to quiet your thoughts, noticing your inhale, and trying to slow down your exhale. Maybe gently lengthening your inhalation and lengthening your exhale. Notice if you're holding tension in your shoulders or in your neck and consciously making a relaxation there. Feeling lightness in your head and shoulders and noticing the weight of your lower body on whatever you're seated on. Challenging your balance a little bit more, perhaps bringing your right hand to your chest. Noticing as your breastbone moves forward into your hand as you take a deeper breath. An option to take your other hand to your lower abdomen or belly. Maybe bringing it there briefly. Maybe holding it there for one full inhale and one full exhale. And then releasing your hands back towards your knees, bring your shoulders up towards your ears. Squeeze your shoulder blades down and back. Again, on an inhale, bring your shoulders up. As you exhale, draw your shoulders back and down. One more full deep breath in, shoulders up and exhale down and back. Walking your fingertips to the floor beside you or maybe to the wheels on, on either side of your chair. If your hands are on the floor, maybe walking your hands a little further away from your hips. On an inhale, place your left hand flat or grab the rim of your tire. Or you'll notice that Alan has some large yoga blocks placing your hand flat on the yoga block and bringing your right hand up to the height of your shoulder with your palm facing up towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in here. Inhale again, bringing the hand perhaps overhead, reaching it straight up towards the ceiling. And then notice what's happening with your left shoulder. Can you stabilize through that left shoulder blade to give you a little bit more balance and support? Inhale, reach the fingertips up higher, and exhale, return your right hand to the mat. Take one full inhale here, one full exhale, and then placing your right hand flat, bring your left hand, palm up, shoulder height. On your next inhale, bring your hand up overhead, reaching your fingertips towards the ceiling and then very consciously stabilizing through that right shoulder blade, drawing it back, pressing your palm into the floor. One full breath into that left side of your rib cage and then exhale, return your left hand to the floor or towards your block or towards your chair. Optional challenge, we're gonna do that two more times. You can repeat one arm at a time or you can try bringing both hands up using your trunk, 
using the placement of your arms to help you get your balance. Inhaling, bringing your arms up overhead, squeezing your upper arm towards your face. So if you're doing the one arm option, you're still actively pulling that arm up towards your ear. If you're with both arms, maybe you're trying to press both fingertips toward each other. And then exhale, pull your arms back down towards the floor. Switching to the other side or repeating both arms at the same time. Inhale, your palms up, shoulder height, and then all the way overhead, actively pulling your arms toward each other and possibly pressing your palms together. Additional challenge here, if your arms are up, maybe you're interlacing your palms together and placing your palm up towards the ceiling, getting a stretch to your wrist and to your fingers. And then exhale, releasing your fingers if they're bound and bringing both hands down to the floor. Bring your hands to your knees. And on an exhale, you're rounding your back. You're dropping your chin to your chest. You're letting your shoulder blades slide away from each other. On an inhale, you're pulling your chest forward, extending your ribs forward, taking a deep breath in and bringing your gaze up towards the ceiling. Exhale, round back. If you're seated in the chair, perhaps you scoop forward enough to allow you some movement. Then inhale again, pull forward. Exhale, press back. Inhale, pull forward. And one more time, just starting to warm up our spine. Exhale and press back. Inhale and pull forward. Bringing your right hand towards the left knee and bringing your left hand either over the back of your chair or towards the mat or towards a block behind you. To the extent that your spine feels comfortable with, you're gonna gradually begin turning towards the left, bringing your chin over your left shoulder. You can press your left hand onto a surface or you can challenge your balance by reaching your palm up off the floor. Inhale, get a little taller. Exhale, feel the left side of your waist pull back and the right side of your waist pull forward. And then come back to the center. Turning to the other side, bringing your left hand towards your right knee, walking your right hand either towards the floor or toward a block behind you, beginning to challenge your balance by turning your chin over your right shoulder. Inhale, get a little taller. Exhale, perhaps twist a little deeper. Again, the option to take your right hand off the floor, working to stabilize. Take a full breath in. And then exhale, come back to the center. Beginning to bring your hands either towards your thighs, towards your knees, or towards the floor in front of you, we're gonna start folding forward. On an exhale, reaching your hands towards the front. Feeling that stretch to your lower back. And using this as an opportunity to inhale fully into the back of your rib cage. Puffing up the back of your lungs towards the ceiling, allowing your head to completely release. Shaking it out rolling it if it's on the floor. You can place a block underneath your head if it's a little bit too low to get to the floor. Taking one more deep breath in here. On an inhale, begin walking your hands back towards your legs. Countering that with an extension, either looping both hands over your armrest or over the back of your chair grabbing a hold of the tires in the back and using that to give you some support, or reaching your fingertips on the ground back behind you. Inhale, lift your chest and lift your chin, squeezing the shoulder blades towards your spine, pressing them down towards your hips. Creating some movement here, bending your elbows for transitioning back to the front. So you can take as many moves as you need to to get there. 
but challenging yourself to make it as fluid a transition as possible. Inhale here. Exhale, soften your elbows. Inhale, push yourself or walk your hands back all the way back behind you. Deep breath in here. Full exhale. Taking one more transition, bending your elbows, using that to push yourself forward and releasing down. Full inhale. Full exhale. And then walking your hands back one last time behind you to get some extension. And then come back to the center. Bringing your right hand as far to the right as you can. If you're seated in a chair, perhaps grabbing a hold of the wheel on your left for a side bend over to the right. If you're on the floor, reaching that right hand over and taking the left hand up overhead. So depending on how comfortable you are here, you can stay on your hand. You could certainly use a block. You could come all the way down towards your elbow. Or if you have the fun big blocks that Alan has, you can use that as a support for you. As you're here, notice if your hip is coming off the mat on the left and think about pressing it back down. Actively thinking about pushing your left knee into the floor. Pulling your right shoulder and your left arm back and then inhale up to the center. And just cross, if you're on the floor with your legs crossed, you can change the position. You'll notice McKenna has her, uh, the soles of her feet together. That's another option. And again, if you're in the chair without a block, perhaps holding on to the opposite wheel. If you have a block, using that to support you. Or if you're on the floor, walking your left hand to the left and bringing your right hand overhead slowly. Working to press your right hip back down towards the floor, pulling your right arm towards your ear. Deep breath in here. Full exhale. And then inhale back through center. Take one more breath in, shoulders to your ears, and then down and back. Drop your chin to your chest, stretching the back of your neck. And beginning to start stretching our legs. You can keep your right leg where it is and extend your left leg out to the side. If you're seated in the chair, you can work on crossing one leg and placing the other one on a stool or a chair or a block. Be mindful if you don't have anti-tip bars on your chair, that your chair is supported by something behind you or that you have a partner with you. Another option is to make sure that the casters in the front are facing as wide away from the back wheels as possible so that your chair has a little bit more stability. And then from here, turning towards your straight leg. So bringing one hand on either side of that thigh, pulling the back ribs around a little bit further back, pulling the ribs in the front a little bit closer to your extended knee beginning to walk yourself forward. If you have a strap, you could use the strap around the ball of your foot. If you can reach the ball of your foot, you can pull that back. Ellie, can you grab the stretch? This allows you to get a stretch to your calf as well as the back of your thigh. And as you fold forward, relaxing your head, if you find that your knee is bopping up, you can use one hand to support and hold that down. Just make sure you're not pressing directly onto your kneecap. And again, as you inhale, think about expanding the back of your lungs and the back of your rib cage. Your awareness is on the heaviness of your legs weighted down towards the floor the lightness of your head and shoulders. 
take another deep breath in here. And as you exhale, you can walk your hands and your shoulders back up. Turning towards your bent leg, taking a hold of your bent knee with the opposite arm, getting another lateral or side stretch, bringing that right arm or the same arm as the leg is bent and starting to go over towards your straight leg. If you need or would like a little bit more stability or have enough flexibility to come down lower, you can rest your forearm on the floor. Super tempting to let your chest fall towards the ground. You wanna keep actively trying to pull it back. You can do that by pushing into the mat. You can do it by pulling back with that right shoulder. You can do it maybe by even turning your gaze up toward the ceiling. One more deep breath in and then come all the way back up. Switching your legs, bringing the opposite leg out into an extended position. Turning toward your straight leg again, one hand on either side of your thigh, walking your hands down closer to your ankle, closer to your feet. Sides are different. Maybe you didn't need a strap on one side, but it may be helpful on the other. If you can get something to the ball of your foot, then you can draw that foot back, feeling that stretch also in your calf and in your ankle. As you fold forward, releasing your head. Again, the option to support that knee and press it down with one forearm. Taking a full breath in, and then exhaling one last time before pressing up into sitting. Switching, bringing that right elbow or the opposite hand to the bent knee and extending the same arm that the leg is bent. We're on different sides here, so trying to fold towards your straight leg Again, the option to place that forearm on the floor. And again, focusing on bringing your shoulder back, using the strength of your chest and arm to pull your overhead arm closer to your ear. Take a big deep breath here. And exhale. On your inhale, come up. Moving into a wide angle stretch. So getting both blocks out to support your legs. Again, you could face your couch and put your legs on the couch, making sure you have your anti-tip bars on or something behind your chair to keep it stable. And then turning first to your right leg, reaching your left hand forward, you can use your right hand to stabilize you. Inhale, come up. Exhale, switch to the opposite side. So making this a little bit more dynamic, inhale to the center. Exhale, back to the right. Inhale to the center. Exhale to the left. And one more time, inhale to the center. Exhale to the right and hold it here. Again, an opportunity to stretch your calf if you can take a hold of that foot. Another opportunity to expand into the back of your lungs and stretch your lower back. Always the option to stabilize that leg with one of your arms. One more exhale. And as you inhale, pressing back up to the center, switching over to that opposite side, walking your hands down, finding that foot, stabilizing your leg. Inhaling here. 
Exhaling slowly. Inhale. Exhale. And come back to the center. Stretching our inner thighs by reaching forward. So you can have your block handy. And remember there are three settings to your block so that you can lower it as you release. But starting perhaps on the higher setting if you're a little bit tighter, as you start walking yourself forward, releasing your head. If you can get all the way to the floor, that's certainly an option. And we're here for five slow breaths. As you release, maybe walking a little further out. You could use your arms again to stretch toward your feet if that feels good to you today or if your ankles are tight and you want that extra stretch opportunity. Taking one more full breath in here. Full exhale. And then walking your hands back. Bringing your hands behind you to get a little extension, counteracting all of that flexion. Bringing your gaze up. And as you exhale, bringing your right leg over towards your left leg, turning. And we're gonna transition, those of us that are sitting on the floor, we're gonna do one more forward fold. Um, so you're gonna want both blocks in front of you. You can have your strap still handy, especially if your lower back or middle back is a little bit tighter. Sometimes it's nice to have that strap. If you can't reach all the way to, the, to your toes, then you can just hold on to your calves. You could hold on to your thighs. If you can go all the way down, you're resting your head down towards your knees or past your knees. You could separate your legs slightly and bring a block there to rest your head on. Inhaling, creating length. Exhaling, perhaps softening into a deeper expression of this posture. Inhale again, lengthening your spine, lengthening the back of your neck. And exhaling, releasing. One last full breath and a full exhale. And then walk your hands back, extending them behind you, bringing them over the back of your chair, just to get a little bit of length through your back. From here, moving down to your back, onto your forearms. If you're seated in the chair, just bringing your hands behind you, probably on the wheels and simulating, just getting a little extension, trying to press down through your forearms, down through the palms of your hands if you can stretch your fingers, squeezing your shoulder blades together, extending the back of your neck. So it's easy here to let the head drop which is not ideal for your spine. So keeping that nice and supported. It's a nice strengthening for the front of your neck, strengthening for your shoulders. As you exhale, let your spine drop down towards the floor. And then if you're able, using your shoulder blades to pull and lift your chest again. One more time, exhale, drop your shoulders, let your trunk fall towards the floor a bit, and then inhale, press up. Coming all the way down onto your back, reaching your arms out to the side, 
So your arms are flat on the floor. I'm just gonna come up so you can see a little bit. We're gonna move into a shoulder stretch. So you're gonna bring your arms up toward the ceiling. You're gonna cross your right hand and you're, you're gonna cross your right and left elbows. And then bending your elbows, you're gonna cross your forearms, bringing your palms together. Using the floor or the back of your chair to support your spine, on an exhale, draw your elbows down towards your waist. On an inhale, press your fingers up overhead. Exhale, draw your elbows down to your waist. Inhale, lift your fingertips overhead. Exhale, again, draw your elbows down. Inhale, lift up. You can take your elbows towards your right and your fingertips towards the left, almost like a windshield wiper on a car. And then switch to the other side. Windshield wiper your hands towards the left and towards the right. And again to the left and to the right. Keeping your palms bound, just try to straighten your elbows gently, slightly, feeling that stretch between your shoulder blades. And then inhale, release this, let this go. Bring your hands down towards the floor, backs of your hands towards the mat. To the extent that you're able, extending your fingers and pressing your nails into the floor, thinking about lifting the, small, the middle of your back up off the floor. So you're pressing down through your arms. If you're seated, you're just getting that action by using the strength of your muscles. And then if you can remember which hand you had on the bottom, switch. And we're gonna cross the opposite over the top, bending the elbows, crossing your forearms, and bringing your palms together. Again, on an inhale, reaching up and overhead. On an exhale, pulling your elbows down towards your waist. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, elbows down. One more time, inhaling up and exhaling down. As you bring your elbows towards the height of your shoulder, windshield wiping your fingertips to the right as the elbows move to the left and then switching. Windshield wiper to the right and switch. One last time to the right and to the left. And then as you come to center, gently extending your elbows to any extent that you can. As you come back to the middle, releasing this, bringing your arms back down. And as you're lying on the floor, Again, extending your arms, pressing your arms into the floor as strongly as you can. And then exhale, relax. If you're on the floor and you're able and comfortable, we're gonna roll over onto your stomach, propping up on your forearms. If you're seated in the chair, you can simulate this with your arms just out in front of you. Sometimes it's nice to take a strap and bring that. If you're seated, you could do this either on the floor or a sitting, but making the strap the same width as your shoulders, you wanna make sure that it's not too wide because that's gonna make it just too easy. But as you're here, turning your palms away from you, having that strap so you can actively push out into the strap at the same time that we're moving up and down. So as you lay on the floor, allow your chest to lower towards the mat. Allow your shoulder blades to slide toward each other. As you inhale, lift your chest, feel the shoulder blades glide away from each other. Exhale, sink your chest. Inhale, press down through your palms and lift. One more time, exhale down. One more time, inhale up. So a strength challenge here. 
shifting your weight as little as possible to the left. So trying to keep your chest right where it is, begin extending your right arm, walking your fingertips towards the front of your mat or beyond, maybe coming up onto spider fingers, all about your left shoulder blade here. Maybe you try taking your right hand off the floor for a second. And as you get a little bit stronger, a little bit more familiar with how to contract those muscles, you can hold your hand for a longer period of time. Bringing that right hand back down, stabilizing through your right shoulder, walking your fingertips of the left hand forward to the front edge of your mat or beyond. Maybe this is challenging to hold. Maybe you're able to take your left hand off the mat. And just notice as you lift and move that left hand, are you shifting to the right? And if so, can you sustain that middle position any bit more? Come back to the center. From here, lowering all the way down to your chest. So as you lower down towards your chest, your arms come out like a goalpost or a cactus. Your elbows at the height of your shoulder. Your fingertips are pointing towards the front of your mat and your arm, elbow is bent to 90 degrees. Alan will show modifications here for you if you're staying in the wheelchair. Bringing your left hand to the height of your chest. Turn your head to the left and gently push with your left arm as you roll toward your right side. You wanna move very slowly, very gently, being mindful that you're feeling a stretch in your chest, but not overly so in the front of your right shoulder. You're pressing until you feel that deep opening, holding, maybe looking over your left shoulder, thinking about drawing your left shoulder down away from your ear. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, lower down. Returning your left hand to that goal post position, bringing your right hand beside your chest, turning your face towards the right, and begin to press towards your left side. Inhaling into that left side of your chest, drawing your right shoulder away from your right ear. Another deep breath in, and then exhale. A modification, slightly, is to do this with your arms straight. So you're still at shoulder height, but your elbows are extended fully. Your fingertips are pointing right and left. So with your arms straight, so you're like a cross now or a letter T. It's important here that you walk your hands just slightly higher than your shoulders. They can be even but you don't want them to be below your shoulder. It's also helpful to your spine if as you do this, you support your head off the floor. Again, bringing your left hand towards your chest in a half push-up position and beginning to roll towards your right side. It's a little easier to go deeper here so you can continue to push. Maybe you're coming off that side more towards your back but it's also important to go slowly. Deep breath in here. Full exhale. And then lower back towards the floor. Extending your left arm out. Again, checking to make sure it's slightly higher than your shoulder. Bringing your right hand towards your chest. Pressing towards your left side maybe pressing slightly towards your back. As you practice this on your own, you can hold this longer for a better stretch. Taking a deep breath in. And then on an exhale, returning to the center. Coming back onto your forearms. 
So that got the front of our shoulders, but we want to round that out by getting the back and rear sides of our muscles as well. So for this, walk your hands a little bit closer to the front of your mat, bringing your elbows a little further from your body. And then you're going to cross your right wrist behind your left elbow. And your left fingers are going to turn to the right side of your mat. You're going to start walking your fingertips in opposite directions. And walk your elbows, before you get too much weight on your arms, walk your elbows a little closer to your waist. As you continue to walk your hands out, allow the weight of your shoulders and chest to press down onto your arms. Hopefully feeling the stretch between your shoulder blades, maybe slightly on the outside edges of your shoulders. If it's uncomfortable for you to have your neck unsupported, you can position a block. This time sending your breath into that area between your shoulder blades. Perhaps as you feel it release, walking your fingertips further apart. Taking one more breath here. Remembering which arm you have in front as you make your way back to the center. Stabilizing for a breath with elbows down, prone on your, um, laying down with your elbows and forearms supported. And then bringing your left hand behind your right elbow, your right fingertips to the left side of your mat, and walking your hands apart. Bringing your elbows perhaps a little closer to your hips, and letting the weight of your upper body press down onto your arms, releasing your head and breathing into that area between your shoulder blades. Letting go of unnecessary tension Noticing if your breathing is changing and slowing it back down. Taking one more breath here. And as you exhale, making your way back to the center. Extending your arms actually walking your hands back towards your waist. So you're gonna come into a low push-up position. Your hands are as close to your waist as your wrists will allow you to get. So you don't wanna go so far that you can't get your hand flat. And then notice that for most of us, our elbows are gonna be higher than our shoulders and we're gonna look a little like some grasshoppers and crickets. I want you to squeeze your elbows in towards your waist and then start lengthening your elbow towards your leg until you feel the upper part of your shoulder get to the same height as your elbow. So it's not so much a push-up as it is a rotation of your shoulder and a lengthening back so that your upper arm becomes parallel to the floor rather than pointing down towards the ground. And sometimes it's nice to just have somebody give you a little bit of assistance finding the position. And so from here, working on lengthening back. Drop your head. There you go. And hold, 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 and relax. <laughs> and then it's always easier the second time. So doing it one more time, squeezing your elbows in together, lengthening your elbows towards your waist, dropping your chin to your chest, and holding for one more breath, and then exhale out. And Jesse will tell you that was so much easier the second time. <laughs> All right, rolling over onto your back. 
So getting a little bit more into our hips, stretching into pigeon, which could easily be done, well, maybe not easily, which can be easily modified to do in the chair. So if you're lying down on the floor, you're gonna pull this right leg up and then taking a hold of your ankle, we're gonna press the knee away and pull the ankle towards you. Now you wanna do this slowly, you wanna do it mindfully, and you wanna respect any tightness in your hip because you don't wanna overly stress the bone in your upper leg as you do this. So Alan is showing a nice modification in the chair. If you're on the floor, you're gonna be pressing that knee away, pulling the ankle towards you. If you're sitting on the chair and you're in this position, if you need to increase the stretch, you're gonna be coming forward with your upper body. Alan's also showing a great modification of a toe stretch. So if you don't have socks on, you can take your fingers and interlace them between your toes giving not only your toes, but your foot a nice stretch. You could add some ankle rotation here, going clockwise and counterclockwise. And then if you're on the floor, you can guide that foot across, bringing your foot towards the floor replacing your hand, taking your left hand to your right knee, extending your right arm out to the side, you can bring yourself into a twist again, depending on your spine, whatever you're dealing with today, going slowly and gently. Deep breath in. If you're sitting in your chair, you can add this twist just by coming toward your bent leg. Maybe taking a hold of the wheel and giving yourself a little bit of support to pull deeper into the stretch. Taking another full breath in, and as you exhale, moving back toward your center, bringing that knee into your chest. And then holding your left hand to your right knee, using your right hand on your calf to maybe give yourself an upward stretch here. Inhale, exhale, maybe draw the leg a little closer. One more deep breath in, one more deep breath out and then controlling your calf as you let your leg come down and pressing your leg back into extension, resting it flat on the ground. Preparing to switch, pulling your left knee into your chest, taking hold of your left knee with your left hand and your right ankle with your right hand, pressing your left knee away and pulling your right ankle toward you. If you're seated, you're crossing that left ankle over your right knee. You have the option of interlacing your fingers between your toes. You have the option of circling that ankle. If you're seated in the chair and you need more of a stretch, you're folding gently over the leg. Take one more full breath in. Full exhale. And then allowing that, uh, releasing that foot, bringing your knee into your chest. Holding your left knee with your right hand, bringing your left hand to your calf and extending and lifting that leg. So I'm pressing the leg straight with my right hand. If your hand is on your kneecap, being gentle, not pressing down directly. Inhale and exhale. 
One more full inhale. One more exhale. And then since you have this leg all, well, since you have this leg already, allowing the knee to bend, holding that left leg to your left chest. This is definitely easier to do when you're laying on the floor. Pulling that right leg into your chest as well. So now you're pulling your knees into your chest. And you may need a buddy to help you transition here. But we're gonna bring our arms to the inside of our knees across the front of our shin and grabbing our foot for an inversion called happy baby. So if you're laying, if you're in the chair, you may need to work on deep breathing and meditate. And know that this is something that could be done on your bed. It could be something that could be done on the couch. It is a little easier if you bring your elbows to the inside of your leg. Um, if you have more lower back flexibility, McKenna is showing a nice modification, bringing her hands to the outside of her leg. The longer you hold this, the more you allow gravity to assist with pulling some of that fluid from your feet and ankles and bringing it back down towards your hips, towards your torso. As Jesse is showing, you can gently use your arms to create a side-to-side -side rocking movement. You can bring the soles of your feet together using your elbows to push your knees away from your shoulders and using your hands to pull your feet closer. And then you can release your feet to the floor, moving your feet to the outside edges of the mat and allowing the knees to drop in toward each other. And if you find that sweet spot where they balance, then you can cross your arms just over your chest, allowing your fingertips to drape down beside your shoulders. So just crossing, letting the weight of your arms hang down over your chest. Wouldn't be yoga if we could do everything perfect. Just completely relaxing your arms. Closing your eyes. Quieting your thoughts. If this is a comfortable, restful position, you can stay there. If you're finding yourself distracted by trying to keep your knees in place, you can allow them to completely stretch out straight. If you like your arms crossed, keep them there, or you could release them down beside your hips, allowing your palms to open up towards the ceiling. So we move into our Savasana, settling in. If you're home right now, feel free to stay there as long as you would like. We're gonna slowly start transitioning back up into a sitting position, ending the way we started. Closing your eyes. If you're comfortable bringing your hands together and placing your thumbs towards your heart. We end yoga practice with namaste. All that is good and special in me appreciates it and is grateful for all that is good in you. We offer that up to each other. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.